All right, so what we're looking at here is solving problems with exponential and logarithmic functions. Most of what I'm gonna do here, uh, we've already done. I just wanna give you a little bit of background on some of the questions. Uh, so example one, for instance, it says three earthquakes occurred at locations A, B, C, with magnitudes four, four six, and seven, respectively, on the Richter scale. So the big thing with logarithmic functions today, the most common used uh, logarithmic scales that you know about are the Richter scale and the decibel scale for sound and for obviously earthquakes. So in this case, it says, how many times stronger was the earthquake B, which was a six, than an A, which was a four? Now here's the thing is with, when you're comparing a six and a four on the Richter scale, uh, well, first off, I will tell you that the Richter scale is unique in that it goes up by ones. All right, now, with a logarithmic scale, what that means is if it goes up by ones, a when you compare a five to a four, a five isn't just one times bigger or just a little bit bigger. It's not. With a logarithmic scale, that's saying that it is 10 times bigger. And when you compare a six to a five, a six is 10 times bigger. And so every time you go up one on the Richter scale, it's by a factor of 10, again, a logarithmic scale. And so if, when I'm comparing a four to a six, I'm going multiplying by 10 twice, which is 10 squared, or what you could say is that a six is 100 times stronger than a four. All right, and so if I looked at B, when it says, uh, when we're comparing a 7 to a 4, well, this time to go, we're going one step up from 4 to 5, another step up from 5 to a 6, another step up from a 6 to a 7, and each time on that logarithmic scale, you're going up by a multiple of 10. And so in this case, 10 to the power of 3, because you're going up three steps, and each of them is multiplying by a factor of 10. If I compare a seven to a four, it's 1,000 times stronger. All right, so that's just how that log, the uh, Richter scale works. Now, it gets a little bit different in example two. Because we're not comparing just nice numbers like a seven, four, five, flat numbers. I have one earthquake, which is a 3.5 on the Richter scale, and a second earthquake has a 6.2 and I want to compare them. Again, with the Richter scale, it's not just three bigger or whatever. Uh, so to compare that, because it's a logarithmic scale, we have powers of 10. And so a 6.2 would be 10 to the power of six strong. And the three would be 10 to the power of 3.5 strong. And a little bit of grade nine math, I have a power divided by a power. I keep the base the same, subtract my exponents, which I'll go to my cheat sheet here, is 2.7. 10 to the power of 2.7 is 501.19. And so if you are comparing an earthquake of a 6.2 magnitude to a 3.5 magnitude, it's actually 501.19 times stronger. So again, there's an easy a method to doing uh, figuring out the Richter scale if the numbers are just nice non non decimal numbers, whole numbers, and yet there's a way to do it if you have decimal numbers. On the same idea, when I get to example three, when we talk about the decibel scale, it works the exact same way, but there's a catch. The decibel scale goes up by tens. Same idea though. Each time you go up by ten you're going up, up by a multiple of 10, because again, it's a logarithmic scale. And so in example three, uh, how many times louder is an ordinary conversation, uh, which is 50 decibels here, uh, than uh, whispering, which has 20 decibels. So I got to fill in here. If I want to compare a 50 to a 20, I got to go by 10, so 40, 30, 20. And so again, I count the steps. Up one, up two, up three. And each time that I'm going up three, it's by a multiple of 10. And so if I compare a 50 to a 20, again, 10 to the power of three, we 
which is a thousand. So a 50 decibel sound is a thousand times louder than a 20 decibel sound. Uh, then we can also compare a rock concert, which is uh, 120 decibels, right at the top here, uh, to a ordinary conversation, which again is 50. So again, I compare a 50 to a 120 in the scale for a decibel scale. It goes up by 10, so I'm going uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Times me by 10 each time. And again, I believe I said 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 10 to the power of 7. Uh, which is seven zeros, I believe that is 10 million times louder. So 120 is a 10 million times louder than a 50. All right, and again, now here's the catch on example four. When we don't have a whole numbers and we're comparing a sound of 104 decibels uh, to 87 decibels. Now here's the catch here, a little bit different. Because the decibel scale goes up by 10, when we compare, we have to take that into account. And so my loudest one, I have 10 to the power of what, 104. But because it goes up by 10, so I'm gonna take that 104 and divide it by 10. All right, and I'm comparing it to a sound that is 87. But again, because it is a goes up by tens on this scale, I take that 87 and I divide it by 10. So that's the one adjustment there. And so I get uh, 10 to the power of, let's see, 104 divided by 10 is 10.4. Uh, 87 divided by 10 be 10 to the power of 8.7. And so again, power divided by power, I subtract my exponents, I get 10 to the power of 1.7. And if I calculate those 10 to the power of 1.7, I get 50.12. And so a 104 decibel sound compared to an 87 decibel sound is 50.12 times louder. So again, just a little bit of adjustment. It's easy to do when you have whole numbers, but again, just a little bit of an adjustment when you have decimals. All right, now next up, I'm going to do, because uh, example five is like what we've been doing. Example six, I'm going to do example 6A. All right, so example 6A, we'll get rid of this. All right, so example six says, the amount of water vapor, can you tell I'm a science teacher here, all these science examples. Uh, the amount of water vapor in the air for a function is given by the equation S. All right, S is equal to uh, 5.06 uh, times uh, one point. 0, 07 uh, to the 0.95 T. There we go. And so T is the temperature and S is the saturation level. All right. In milliliters per me cubic meter. All right. So find the temperature of air if the saturation is 50 milliliters per cubic meter. All right. So that is our S value. So I plug in a 50 here. Now, again, all we're doing is uh, real-life questions because we've already solved something like this. We are going to solve for an exponent, all right? So that means we are going to take the log of both sides, but I can't do that just yet. I'm going to get rid of that 5.06, so I'm going to divide both sides by that 5.06. Those are gone. Uh, on this side here, I have that 1.07 to the 0.95 T. 
And let's see here. 50 divided, that's got to be 9 point something. Let me see. Uh, what do I get? Uh, 9.88. Okay. All right. And now, again, this kind of like review. Hopefully, uh, we're going to take a log of both sides. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm solving for an exponent, and I can use that log rule that brings the exponent down in front. Uh, but again, anytime I can figure something out, like the log of 9.88, uh, which is 0 0.995. Again, using my log rule, bringing this 0.95t down to the other side, and I still have this log 0.107. All right, so again, I like to figure out my numbers. If I do that log point uh, 07, get that figured out. So log function takes big numbers, makes them smaller. So that number is going to be really small. And in fact, it is 0 0.03. We've been getting, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, I got a T here, I got a number here. These are all multiplied, which means it doesn't matter which order. So I'm gonna put these two numbers together, the 0.95 and the 0.03. Uh, uh, so I multiply those together and I get 0.028T. And I still have this 0.995. All right, and then lastly, divide by numerical coefficient. There we go. We divide those two out. And my temperature that would give me this 50 milliliters per cubic meter saturation. Uh, let's see here. I'm getting uh, 35.5 degrees Celsius. So again, that's just something that we've done before solving an exponential equation. Uh, again, solving some of the log.